you guys. Um, thanks for watching my videos. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about um, how I rig up and how we rig up here at the Maumee River while I run. So I figured I would show you that as well as some things I do um, to help make it easier while I'm out there in the water to rig up and to catch fish um, without having to deal with anything really just to make things easier to fish uh, so you don't have to get out and you don't have to take too much time to rig and you have everything you need um, thanks for watching I'm setting up my well it's an old fanny pack but going to be this year's new fanny pack. I'm setting it up for this year. While I run 2022, I have another fanny pack. I'm going to be transferring all my stuff from it. I think I was packing too much. A lot of the stuff in here is stuff left over from the summer. When I cleaned out my bag, I found all of these extra grubs, tails. Um, what I like to do with my extras is take one of my extra bags I'll just throw them all in there. Right here I got some walleye scent. Put that in there and squish them all around. Get that scent all over them. Uh, smells like a Big Mac. This is just some walleye scent I got from Bass Pro, I believe. Gives me confidence. I have no idea if they can even smell it or not. I just like to do it with my extra grubs. I do not do it with all of my grubs. Uh, you know, I just do it for what the heck. They're special. Okay. This is just my extra little knife. It serves almost no purpose other than being a knife. You always need a knife when you are fishing. This is just a little knife that I always keep in my bag. Look at that guys, zipper knife. Lost the zipper handle. Now we got a knife handle for the zipper. The zipper knife. You're gonna want tape. You don't want to take fish that are too small. It has to be that long, 15 inches. This is just Ozark Trail tape. Cost me like a dollar fifty. Clippers. These clippers are ideal because they also have this little pointy guy right here, and that's for getting the paint out of the eyes of your jigs. I'll show you a little bit about that. Just this, which is cool. That's what I like to use these for, is attached to my waders or to my bag, so I can pull the line right off of this, which I showed you. You pull the line right off of your, your spool and clip it with your clippers. Another cool idea I had, I had to solve the problem of pulling out the leader line while I'm out in the water 
Now, I don't want to take out spool every time I'm pulling out leader line and I usually don't pre-rig my jigs. So what I did, how I solved that problem, is I took the hook off of, I took the hook off of a stringer, just a cheap stringer, it's like $1.50 or $2 or whatever at Walmart. Normally this is what you would put through the fish's mouth. Most of you know this. So I took it off of the chain itself, which wasn't very hard. Just do that. You take the metal piece off, it's basically a paper clip. Put it back on there. So I put it straight through the center. This is a torn up spool, it's been through it. It's like two years old. Um, so you put it right up through there, clip it, plow. Now, this part would be attached to your waders, or you could attach it to your bag. If you wanted it to be attached to the zipper of your bag or something, but that seems pretty inconvenient to me. I like to have it right on the chest of my waders. Now here's the deal. You don't want the line to just run straight off your spool while it's hanging on your chest. So, I put a hair tie right here on the spool. There's a hair tie on it. Now, that is what holds the line on there and keeps it from just running off. So now I can grab line, I can pull that line. It's not gonna come off, pull as much line as I want. It's nice, it's very nice, no running line. Running line. Cool. And also, if you have a big spool of this line um, and you want to do this, just buy one little spool. Use the little spool. And then when you're done, you can wrap some more line on it if you want for the sake of convenience. It'll take you five minutes at home to just wrap some more leader line on here for tomorrow. Um, you know, rather than the inconvenience of dealing with this while you're out in the water and you want to get rigged up as quickly as possible to catch your next fish. Let's talk about reels. The first reel I used for the walleye run was this one. Fantastic reel. This is the Daiwa Regal. Um, but my biggest mistake about this reel was that it was not big enough. It's a 2500 sized reel. Um, it's just, 2500 is just not big enough. You need something bigger. You need between 3000 and 4000 in my opinion, unless you're working with uh, slow moving water, which you're usually not in the Maumee River. After that, the Fluger President XT. This was um, my next reel after the Daiwa Regal. Um, it was a pretty nice reel, honestly, but it was a little heavy for me and I got the 4,000 size, which I prefer the 4,000 size of a reel for the walleye run. But maybe for this particular reel, I would have preferred a, a 3,500 or a 3,000. Um, I'm not sure if it comes 3,500, regardless. I would prefer a size like that rather than this very large reel um, and heavy. I, and it just kind of struggled with uh, some of the fish, I don't know. For just 30 more dollars, I upgraded one more time to the Daiwa Fuego. Um, still kind of big, the bale is smaller, which I appreciate, it's very smooth much lighter still has a nice power handle i lost the little silver cap on it it has a power handle beautiful awesome reel it looks really cool the drag is incredible it handles everything i can ski fish across the top if i want i can fight a really big fish 
I don't have problem with anything I hook into during the run or towards the end of the run when other fish start coming through the river. I won't have any trouble uh, horsing in a big sheep's head or a big carp or anything like that, even in the current. This reel makes it very easy for me to get my fish to me and into my net or into my hands. 3,000 to 4,000 size reel. Don't let yourself down by getting a reel that is too small. It cannot hold up. Let's talk about rigging up. All right. Um, so when you rig up, you're gonna spool your reel with 10 to 20 pound braid. That's what you should use. Personally, 15 to 20 is what I prefer. 10 is a little light, it can snap, but it will still work. But you're gonna want that 10 or 20. Okay, do one without a bunch of braid on it. So, what you're gonna wanna do is take your braid, fold it in half. So now your braid Fold it down just this much, probably like four inches, but you can do it bigger if you need to. You're gonna pass it through the eye of your trolling weight. You're just gonna do a regular overhand knot with that loop. Pass it through itself. See that? So now I did the overhand knot. I have this loop. And I'm just gonna put the weight right through that loop. I'm gonna pull it tight. Cinch that knot down. Look at that. That is not gonna come off. That is the Palomar knot. You're more than welcome to clip this off I recommend you do so that your leader does not get caught up with this line. You're gonna want it to be between eight and 12 pound test. I use eight sometimes, that can do it, that can get them in, but it will break in those heavier currents. So in the heavier currents, I, uh, I like to throw 12 pound test, mono. Some people use fluoro. I don't think it's stretchy enough. I like mono. So what you're gonna do with this is pass it through the eye, like so. Now what I normally do to save time, instead of just wrapping it repeatedly, I will grab the swivel, I'll spin it right there. I want it to be spun at least seven times. I don't care if it's more. And I pass it through. There's a little opening right there by the eye. I'm gonna pass it through there. I know it's probably really hard to see. And I'm gonna take this tag end right here that I just passed through that little opening. And now I'm gonna put it through this loop. There you go. Cinch that knot. Ooh, 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 ooh. I cinched it. For your jig, you will use the same knot. Now, there's your whole rig right there. Ideally, you're gonna want a four to six foot leader on that rig. That is actually a very short leader I have on here just for the sake of um, showing you. So you're gonna want this leader to be four to six feet long. Um, depending on the flow of the water, you're just gonna have to figure that out for yourself, I think. I just experiment with it. The weight is going to change based on the depth of water and 
and how fast it's moving, like I said. And also it's based on preference. Some guys might think you should be throwing a half ounce, and that's when I might be throwing a 5.8 or an ounce, you know. Egg sinker. Pass your braid through there. This is when somebody else will tell you to put a bead on there. When I'm standing in the water, I'm not putting a bead on anything to tell you the truth. We're just gonna do the Palomar knot again. Pass it through the eye. Regular overhand knot. There's your overhand knot. through the loop, pull it tight. There you go, you have your egg sinker, you have your swivel. Some people, most people, put a bead right there between the swivel and the sinker to keep that sinker from beating the crap out of your knot. I don't. I don't usually lose my weights because of it, I'm sure that it creates a risk of losing your weights and losing your swivels, but I have not lost a weight or swivel because of it, personally. Jig box. Jig box is nice because if you put this carabiner on here, it can go right on your chest. So then you don't have to go searching for anything. It's just right there. This one has a few small weights in it. I just got more jigs, so I'm gonna fill it up right now. Now this can be slightly dangerous, so you have to uh, be careful. This is why I always keep a couple jigs in my bag, as well as uh, in my box. Because sometimes you can open up your chest box and you know, your jigs can just fall into the water and float away and you have to be very careful when trying to retrieve your jigs so that you don't fall in the water because obviously wading is dangerous. So I keep some of the jigs in my bag and some of the jigs in here for easy access. Um, right now I'm gonna throw some jigs in here. These are some floating jig heads I get from Bass Pro. It's $6 for 12 of them. Got these from Mommy Tackle. Got these from Fin Feather Fur. Got some other ones somewhere from Clarence. A man of many jigs. On the other side, where I put some weights. And again, it can be kind of dangerous to put all your weights in the same place. So I keep some of my weights in my bag and I keep some of my weights in my box. I don't want to lose all my weights because I accidentally dumped my box out. So I keep some of my weights in my bag as backup. I'll just throw various weights in there, you know, I'm gonna use them all. Some of them have been used, as you can see, they still have a little bit of line on them. 